This is Tim Tucker, AE6LX from the Worldwide Radio Forum. In this episode, we're going to learn how to communicate with other hams using your HT through the satellites that orbit the Earth. To communicate through the satellites using your HT, you need a few basic supplies other than the HT itself. You need a watch, a compass, some free software that you can download from the internet, and it helps to have an external antenna to use with your HT. For the compass, I just use this very basic compass that I got at a sporting goods store. It has a dial that helps you uh, set your bearing, and it's very simple, very cheap to use, under $20. Next, we'll take a look at how you need to prepare your HT and then the computer software. When you look up the frequencies for the satellite, and today we're going to discuss AO51, uh, the most commonly used satellites for handheld and VHF, UHF. Uh, transmissions, the, the frequencies are listed as uplink and downlink frequencies. The uplink is the same as the transmit on your HT and the downlink is the same as the receive. You can see here that I've set the, the uplink frequency showing it here 145.920 um, and if we change it we'll, we'll see the commonly listed uh, downlink frequency is on the 440 side. Now there's an, there's an effect called the Doppler effect that you have to account for. What that means is as the satellite comes towards you, it has a higher pitch and it steadily lowers till it's over the top of you and then as it tails away the pitch gets lower, the frequency gets lower. This is uh, the same effect as a train whistle, if you're familiar with that. It's most pronounced on the 440 side, so that's really the only side we have to worry about. Now to accommodate for that, the easiest way is to program in five sets of frequencies to your HT in an odd split. So I'm showing the, the center frequency, or the one that will be listed, and then um, the other frequencies are all set to handle the, the Doppler shift. So what I do is I set um, the five frequencies. I have it shown here as AO51A, B, C, D, E. As the satellite approaches you, you'll start on the A. The frequency is set up 10 hertz higher than what the shown downlink frequency is. As it makes its pass, you'll change it, lower it, lower it again when you hear it start to fade away, start to lose it, and so on throughout its pass. You'll be able to tell when you need to change the frequency because the reception will start to fade out. Again, since this is really only a, a factor on the 440 side, you set the odd split side, the transmit side, to the same 2 meter frequency on all five memories. Now I mentioned that you needed some free software. This is used to help us tell when the satellite is going to be overhead to predict when it's usable. There are several different uh, pieces of software that you can use, but before we talk about the software, you need to familiarize yourself with an important web page. That web page is amsat.org, A M S A T dot O R G. This web page has links to the schedules of all the satellites and, and they change their schedule about what types of frequencies are going to be active. Um, AO51 has 1.2 gigahertz uplinks, they have a, a packet, um, they have various uh, 2 meter 440 um, frequencies that can be used for QRP for regular use. Um, so you can see here on this schedule you have uh, the schedule for last week, for this week coming up and uh, that makes us, lets us know, uh, make sure that how we want to communicate is available. One piece of software that you can download for free to help predict when the satellite is going to pass over is called Satscape. Uh, Satscape is a, is a Java application. It's really neat. One of the neat things it can do is show you exactly where the satellite is uh, currently in its orbit. So you can see here AO51 is just off the coast of South Africa in Antarctica. The ring uh, that is shown around the Earth shows you an estimate of the footprint of where that satellite, the stations on the Earth that satellite can communicate with. The other thing it does really well, which is the most important, is predict when it's going to be overhead. Um, so you can see here I've shown predictions for today and it, it displays several important columns that we need to understand. Uh, the start time, when it's going to start its pass, the start azimuth, which is the, your degree setting on your compass, where it's going to start its pass, 
the peak time, which is where the satellite is going to be in the peak position over you, and the peak azimuth, again, the setting on your compass where it's at its highest point for you to communicate with, and the end time, when the pass is going to end, and the ending azimuth. And of course, you can see here the length of time that the satellite will be overhead. Uh, you see from the length there that the average passes aren't very long. 10 to 15 minutes is about all you get. Now we're going to look at how to tell where the satellite is coming and the pass it's going to make. So I have my compass here and I've written down the coordinates, the uh, degree bearings. It says here at 631 it's going to be at 176 degrees. So I position my compass to where it reads 176 and then angle it until the red needle is pointing north. So here I can see that it's pointing straight at the telephone pole over there. Find something off in the distance to tell where it's going to start. So that's going to be the start path of the path. Next, it's going to be at 261 degrees. So I turn the, the compass to 261 degrees. And what I wrote down is that that's going to be at 639. So again, turn my body till the needle is pointing north. Look at the way the arrow is pointing. I'm going to use this end tree over here. So it starts there. In the middle, at the highest point of its pass, it's going to be right here. And at the ending pass, is going to be 343 degrees. So I turn the compass again to 343 degrees. And find the bearing. And the end of the pass is going to be right over the top of the camera right here at a tree back there. So you want to do this ahead of time. You don't want to do this at the last minute while you're trying to work the satellite. Get your bearings, pick out some trees, some telephone poles, some houses, whatever it takes uh, that you can use as reference points. Now, we know that the pass is, starts at 631, it peaks at 639, and it ends at 646. So as you point to your antenna, you're going to want to point at the start, look at your watch so that at the peak, you're roughly over the spot where it says it's going to be peak at the middle time and then at the end of that pass you're going to be pointing it over here. So that's how you get your bearings and know where, to, where the satellite is coming. There's a couple things we need to discuss in preparation for the satellite as it comes on actually how to make the, path, how to make, uh, the calls and, and contacts while it passes. You have two basic choices of how, how you can do this with a handheld radio. You can use the stock ducky antenna that's on the, on the radio. If you decide to do this, it's helpful to have a handheld mic. And the way you do it is as it makes its pass, you angle the, ant the antenna down away, facing horizontally to where the, where the satellite is gonna come. So if the satellite is coming from over here to over here, I angle it down as it makes its pass, I turn it this way. So that's one option. You can see why it would be helpful to have a handheld mic if you were going to do that. So in today's pass, if I was going to do it, I'd start over here, and as it went, I'd turn it this way as it went through. That, that is possible, and you can make contacts that way, but it is fairly difficult. A better way and an easier way to make contacts is using some kind of external antenna. Um, there are two commercially made antennas that I know of. One uh, made by Elk Antenna, it's a log periodic, 2 meter 440. And the other one is an Aero satellite antenna, also a 2 meter 440, it's a Yagi. This is the 2 meter 440 Aero Yagi. Um, this is the antenna that I'm going to hook up to this to hopefully make a few contacts here. Now the other choice obviously is you can homebrew your own. You can homebrew an antenna like this for about 20 to 25 dollars and it's not very difficult at all. I've actually built one for 1.2 gigahertz. So as the satellite comes, we point it in the direction where it's going to be. We know that the, the peak is going to be at uh, 58 degrees, so we start low on the horizon. We angle it up to roughly about 58 degrees, and then as it makes its pass, we go down towards the horizon. Let's talk for a moment about how to use the radio. Uh, the only way you're going to be able to make any kind of contacts is if you use the radio on the receive side with the squelch cracked wide open. So it's got to be wide open like this so that you can hear everything. If you try to use it with the squelch uh, shut off, you will have no success. So remember, start, start the pass with the fre receive frequency on the higher frequencies and then move them to the lower frequencies. 
when you're making trying to make calls give out your call sign and if you're using a handheld it's helpful to say handheld people will generally give you a break and try to get you in there generally people will ask you for your grid square so they know where you're at so make sure you know uh, where you're at and what your grid square is at a time there's just a few more tips that we need to cover before we're ready to try to work this satellite first we need to describe how the satellite goes through the orbit um, it's not like a fixed station where the antenna is always pointing straight up or a Yagi is pointing straight horizontally. The satellite kind of tumbles through the sky. The antenna moves around um, as the satellite kind of falls through the sky. So because of that, the polarity of the signal is constantly changing. So we can accommodate for that um, by using our Yagi antenna uh, in a certain way, and, and that is as we're going, as we're trying, make, as the satellite is making its pass, turn the antenna while you're listening until you hear the peak signal. This this uh, this allows you to find where the polarity is optimal. It will change as the satellite's making its pass. So at one point in time, you may hear it best perfectly sideways. At another point in time, you may hear a better little angle. At another point in time, you may hear it a little better when it's straight up and down. You have to constantly adjust and listen to the satellite signal as it comes through so that you can uh, have your antenna pointed in the right direction. When the satellite starts to make its pass, the static will go clear and you will start to hear almost like a radio silence first and then you'll start to hear stations. Don't start giving your call sign out until you start to hear other stations uh, in your receive. Now the last tip is to wear headphones. Uh, it really helps you be able to hear what's going on for the purposes of today's demo, we're not going to wear earphones so that you can hear the satellite contact uh, over the camera. So, let's uh, let's see if we can work this satellite. Let's turn it on, and we'll start listening. So now you can hear the satellite's coming in pretty good. Remember. As it makes its pass, I'm changing the frequency back and forth between the memories to hear the optimal, to find the optimal frequency. Okay, Roger, Tango, Zulu. Kilo Echo Pod, Golf Foxtrot, Juliet, Delta Mike 95. AE6LX, handheld. 96, WB3, Japan, Fox, DR. Hey, Bob, did you get my call? KO16, 3W. I sure did, Leo. Probably got stepped on, but yep, sure did. Always good to talk to you, Leo. Always a pleasure here, too, and I'm easily stepped on. AE6LX, handheld. AE6LX, Kilo Golf 6, Juliet Echo. Kilo Golf 6, Juliet Echo, DM14, Alpha Delta here. Uh, WB3 uh, question mark Alpha Echo 6 Lima X ray and DM14 AD. Okay, Alpha Echo 6 Lima X ray WB3 Japan, Fox here, Delta Mike 26, Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, Roger, just a short uh, hop skipping away. Uh, 73, AE6LX handheld. AE6LX, KE5, GFJ, Delta Mike 95. Uh, this is AE6LX. Come again with the uh, Texas call sign. Uh, Kilo Echo 5, Golf, Foxtrot, Japan. Kilo Echo 5, Golf, Foxtrot, Japan. Roger. Uh, DM14 AD here uh, near Los Angeles. Okay, we're DM95 here in uh, the Panhandle. Wow. 73. W6 Yankee X ray, AE6LX. Roger. With 60 here, stay Charlie Mike. Uh, Roger, Charlie Mike 87, Delta Mike 14, Alpha Delta here. Alpha Charlie 6, Sugary Uniform, Kilo Golf 6, Charlie. And there you have it, folks. Made about four or five contacts there with the handheld. Uh, have a lot of fun with it. For more information and all things ham radio, please visit the Worldwide Radio Forum at www.worldwidedx.com.